Hi everyone, um, my name is Shana. I'm a SEN occupational therapist in Westminster. Um, I've got my colleague here today called Mariana, and today we're going to be providing a training on sensory circuits um, and how to get one um, run up in school. OK, so the aims of the presentation today are to introduce staff to sensory circuits at school um, explain the benefits of sensory circuits and how they can impact children and um, show examples of sensory circuits and um, try to guide you to set up a sensory circuit and then potentially run one in school um, and direct you to further information about sensory circuits. OK, so what is a sensory circuit? So a sensory circuit is basically a short plan um, or sequence of physical activities. So a bit like an exercise circuit um, and it's designed to stimulate students, bodies and minds so that they're ready for a productive day at school. Um, so it can be really great for children, um, you know, with sensory processing difficulties and um, perhaps ADHD and autism um, as it gives them the stimulation they're seeking and helps regulate their sensory system so that they're ready to focus and engage in learning and they're and they're really prepared for the for the day ahead. Um, OK, so individualized sensory circuit programs can be developed by an occupational therapist. Um, to support their regulation at school um, and they can be easily integrated into the school day. Um, these are just some pictures here of what it might look like. Um, so this might be perhaps in the school in the school gym. Um, so just to say also when you carry out this sensory circuit will vary for each child, obviously depending on their, you know, their sensory needs um, and their levels of alertness. Um, but generally it can be beneficial to carry out a sensory circuit and um, before situations or triggers that you know are going to be difficult for a child. So, for example, if the child is, um, you know, really struggles to, you know, cope in the, in the noisy canteen, um, it might be a good idea to do it before then, um, you know, maybe before um, settling into class again after break times, do they find that difficult? Um, or before, you know, length, lengthy listening times. So when a child is expected to remain seated for quite amount of time, it could be a good idea to do it before then to help them get their 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 energy and their, and their wiggles out and things like that. OK, so what does the sensory circuit look like? So, yeah, imagine a gym circuit, but with a different goal. So instead of focusing on the cardiovascular system and building muscles, the focus is about getting ready to learn and attend. So it should be an active, physical and fun activity that young people or children enjoy. So ideally, um, yeah, it should be completed first thing in the morning um, and after lunch. Um, a sensory circuit will typically include um, different movement stations which children can work around. Um, so generally what happens is children do an exercise using a piece of equipment um, on every uh, on every station for a short amount of time before moving on to the next station. So there's quite a few different stations within the circuit. Um, so there might also be um, a fast movement station, which is generally at the beginning of the sensory circuit. And that's really good for children um, who need to become more alert. Um, and there also could be what we call a heavy workstation to support children get organized. Um, and they're generally activities which are going to provide input into um, the children's muscles and joints. That's really going to help calm um, and alert them. OK, so the benefits of a sensory circuit. So firstly, it really helps to calm or energize our, um, children's sensory system. So it really helps to tackle sensory imbalances um, and, this, and supports those with lots of or very little energy so they can achieve that just right state um, and level of arousal. It also helps to support their body awareness um, because there's lots of physical activities included in the circuit. So things like pushing, pulling, stretching, applying deep pressure. Um, and again, that's going to stimulate their proprioceptive system um, by providing input into the muscles and joints. Um, it also helps develop um, children's physical and motor skills um, because it helps build things like strength, coordination, shoulder stability, balance, 
Um, it can also prepare pupils for learning by adjusting their arousal levels, either by um, settling them down or helping to wake them up. So depending on their sensory needs, um, it can actually help um, children develop quicker, more efficient dressing skills, you know, because they're having to practice, you know, taking off their shoes and socks and things like that and um, to join the circuit. OK, who will benefit from participating in a sensory circuit? So. Sensory circuits can help anyone that presents with any of the following difficulties. So things like children who, you know, fidget a lot and they're changing up their position constantly and um, children who might be slow to start work or they're missing any kind of verbal cues and things like that. So they need more kind of alerting input. And um, it may also help children who have difficulty organising themselves and um, who are also quite lethargic. So they again, they need more kind of alerting input. Um, it can also help children who have, you know, poor kind of coordination and balance. So it really helps develop their gross motor skills. Um, and obviously children who have sensory processing difficulties are going to help regulate their sensory imbalances. Um, and children with poor attention and concentration skills, it's going to give them that break that they need. OK, so thinking about what equipment you might need for a sensory circuit. So um, you can do this with very little um, or, you know, um, anything which which you have kind of around the school at the moment. So check obviously what's in your PE cupboard or your, what, what equipment you have. So it can be things like, you know, using hula hoops, cones, bean bags, um, long, ben long benches and um, skipping ropes and things like that. So, yeah, you don't need lots of equipment and some of the actual parts of the sensory circuit can be done without any equipment. So you can do things like jumping jacks, animal walks and things like that. Um, so, um, yeah, but I will go on to explain when we talk about the different workstations, what kind of equipment that you can be using. Um, but just to say, if you have a like a mini trampoline or a gym ball, um, these are really great. Um, and you can use these for um, different parts of the sensory circuit. So they're a really great investment um, and they can provide different kind of sensory input, especially the gym ball, um, because you can use that to provide kind of alerting input. So the child can sit on it, have a really good good bounce on that. Um, but it can also help to calm children because you can use it to give them deep pressure and things like that. Um, so, um, yeah, and again, like I said, there's lots of different um, exercises that you can do without some equipment, even things like, you know, yoga poses, a bit of a massage um, and, and as I said, animal walks and things like that. OK, so. Um, so how is a sensory circuit set up? So basically there's three parts of the sensory circuit, three parts to the sensory circuit. It's really important as well um, that you carry out the sensory circuit in this, um, in this way, in this structured way, um, as you don't want the child to return to class, you know, very hyperactive or wound up. So it's important that you firstly start with an alerting activity, then move on to an organising activity and then move on to a calming um, activity. OK, so um, when you put um, a sensory circuit together, so yeah, firstly start with an alerting activity. So alerting activities are anything which is going to um, stimulate our vestibular and our cardiovascular system. So it's kind of going to get your heartbeat up a little bit. Um, so that helps prepare the brain for learning um, and the demands of the school day. So it's things like, you know, skipping, running, jumping, anything which is quite fast paced. So you can use the, the trampoline here if you have one or the ball, the gym ball to do some bouncing. Um, the, then you're going to move on to the organization organization stage. Um, and that's basically going to help sort and prepare the body and brain. Um, for for learning and generally that includes activities where you have to use a little bit of balance and um, that could be things like climbing and um, balancing throwing maybe bean bags into a target any kind of sorting activities and um, you're generally having to use your balance but also your brain and um, to organize your body at the same time 
um, but we'll go on to explain in a bit more in detail about some organi organising activities. And then the final stage of the sensory circuit should be an, um, an activity which is quite calming, because again, like I said, you want to end with this. You don't want the child going back quite hyperactive back to the class, so you need to finish with a calming activity. And this is very important. Um, so yeah, it ensures that they're calm and they're centered and they're ready to learn. So that's something which is going to obviously relax the senses of children. So you could do things like wall press ups, maybe some yoga poses, some deep pressure and um, maybe wrapping the child up, giving a bit of a hug, maybe doing some deep breaths. Um, I would also suggest possibly doing maybe, you know, maybe two alerting activities, two organizing activities and two calming activities. So you might be doing about six, six activities in the, in the whole circuit, if that makes sense. OK, so um, just to describe a little bit more about the alerting activities. So these are anything which, like I said, are quite high impact. Um, it helps prepare the brain for learning. Um, but just be mindful, you know, if there are children who do struggle with, with um, you know, their vestibular system, so they get a little bit nervous with movement and things like that, and um, with like excessive movement, just be mindful of these children and you might have to grade um, the activity. And um, so it can be things like, you know, ball bouncing, jumping, running, star jumps, frog jumps. Um, so, yeah, there's lots of different examples here that, that you can try. The organising activities. And um, so, like I said, it, inc it includes um, things like balance and timing. So the child really needs to try and organise um, their body and use their brain to do more than one thing at the same time. Um, it also helps to stimulate our proprioceptive sense here because obviously it includes lots of different things like pushing, pulling, lifting and using your own body weight. Um, so a really good one here can be things like animal walks. So doing like crab jumps and um, crab, no, sorry, crab walk, frog jumps, bear walks and, um, you know, com commando crawling on the floor. You can do lots of throwing and catching activities, but you can try and challenge the child. So you can ask the child maybe to sit on the gym ball and maybe doing some throwing and catching that way. And maybe you could ask them to do like a half kneeling position and, and throwing the ball again. And you could do some wheelbarrow walks on the gym ball. So get the child to lie over the, the, the gym ball on their tummy and ask them to do a wheelbarrow walk, um, which is the, the ball rolling picture here. Um, so, yeah, these are just some of the um, activities that you can include in the organization stage. And then finally, the, the last stage, which is the calming activities. Um, can it, anything which includes kind of, you know, deep pressure and um, maybe for children who, you know, are quite, you know, they're always quite low arousal. So they might need to spend a little bit more time in the alerting section. So you don't want to do too many low arousal activities because then they'll end up being kind of, you know, under aroused. And um, so, yeah, you just just be mindful of that. But these are um, generally activities which are going to help you yeah, calm the child. So any kind of pressure activities. OK, I'm just going to hand you over to Mariana now to um, complete the training. Hello. So this is a video example of a sensory circuit. Um, the video is a bit long, so I won't show it now, but um, he gives lots of good ideas for each section of the sensory circuit. And so I really recommend you to watch it. And on YouTube, you can find lots of other examples as well of sensory circuits in schools and uh, at home as well. So in this other example, we have Kerry, a teaching assistant, and she sets up a sensory circuit in the PE hall for four students. So she has a group and these four students, um, they need to increase their arousal levels. Um, what happens is that these students, they spend at least half an hour on the bus before they get to school and typically they arrive sluggish and tired. So they need to increase their energy and arousal levels before engaging in classroom activities. So in this sensory circuit, she set up uh, for the alerting section, star jumps and gym ball bounces. And then for the organizing section, scooter board, 
squashes across the room, um, balance beam activity, and then for the end, ball squashes with the gym ball. Uh, so notice that because they needed to increase their energy levels, they spent more time in the alerting section than in the calming section. Uh, and she set up a time for each activity. Um, and on total, the circuit takes uh, took about 15 minutes and it's timetabled uh, for the students. Um, a, a good idea is to use a timer for each activity of the sensor circuit so it helps with transition. So this is a different example. So this student is, he's a movement seeker. He finds tricky to stay still when seated on the carpet in the morning. And to, for, to help him, his teaching assistant organizes sensory circuit to help him to get organized and release some energy and, and feel calmer and feel more organized for learning activities. Um, so this sensory circuit, he, um, he, he does some skipping and jumping for the alerting section and then three activities for the organizing section. And in the end, he does wall press ups and a massage with the therapy ball. So Liam, he needs more calming, regulating input to his body and his uh, nervous system. So here he spends more time on the calming section of the sensory circuit and less time on the alerting section. So he needs more like um, static calming activities. And for the organizing section, balance activities, they're really good as well to regulate their uh, energy levels and because they help the, the child to feel more grounded. Now, important things to consider when setting up uh, a sensory circuit. Um, so regarding space and equipment, ha have a review of what you have already available uh, and what you need to buy. But like we said before, you don't need a lot of equipment and a lot of expensive equipment to set up a good sensory circuit. So do what you can with um, what you have. Regarding time, um, what you can do, you can have sensory circuits scheduled into the daily timetable. Um, and so that helps um, to create a routine for the children. And obviously the amount of time that you have available for the sensory circuits will help uh, determine how many activities you can include in the sensory circuit. So consider the arousal needs of each child attending a sensory circuit. So you want to include activities that help them organize their sensory imbalances and not overload them. So some children, they might need to spend more time in the alerting activities, or more time on the calming section. So just have a think, is this child usually over alert uh, or under alert? Do, need, do, need, do they need to calm down or do they need to activities to wake them up. So this, the child's arise, uh, arousal needs will dictate the type of sensory activities you should include in your sensory circuit. No one size fits all. So if you have a group, it's important to consider all the needs of all children in the group and their sensory imbalances. So um, children we need who need to get uh, organized they typically need more structured, so they might need more grounding, uh, uh, calming activities. Um, so in those with lower arousal, they might need to do faster movements for longer, longer likes, running and jumping. So although you have uh, the same setup, uh, the same sensory circuit setup for this group, the uh, different children might need to complete them in a different way. Please consider safety, safety during exercises if you're using equipment like gym balls and scooter boards, because some children, they might not use this equipment in the ways they have been suggested. Uh, so please also ensure supervision, uh, close supervision at all times. Uh, and think about the um, staff student ratio, ratio that you need when um, implementing a sensory circuit. Another thing to look out is for signs of overstimulation or sensory overload. So these include squealing, spinning or running, 
Uh, these are some signs for um, sensory overstimulation. So when you see these signs, make sure to include calming activities like stretching, uh, weight bearing, deep breathing, resistance activities with these with these children. So visuals can be a really helpful tool to use when you're doing sensory circuits because they help uh, the students to understand what they're going to do next and they help them also match the different movements and different activities uh, to the different sections of the sensory circuit. So the type of visuals you, you will use really depends on what works best for the child. So you can use symbols or you can use photographs of the activities and the equipment and you can use color coding as well. So you can have different colors for each uh, for each section. So for example, this visual here on the right. Um, and um, yeah, this one is a very good example because then you have the visuals for each section ready uh, to be chosen. And visuals can help with choose making as well. Um, and so the activities don't have to be chosen and set up um, completely by the, the adults and can be really um, helpful as well for the child to choose the activities they want to do. So this is a, a example of a visual that you can use. This is available online. Uh, it's an energy meter and this is from the autism level up framework. OK, and this visual help uh, the students to identify their their energy levels. Um, so they go from feeling sleepy, uh, feeling calm and organized to fidgety and and overexcited. So here they identify the energy they, they are at on the right and and then what the energy they think they need for the activity in question. So for sensory circuits, it, it, this can be a good uh, check-in visual to use before and after a sensory circuit. And it can help also to, um, to measure the effectiveness, effectiveness of the sensory circuit. So do they feel calmer after doing the sensory circuit? Do, you feel, do they feel um, overactive? So uh, this is just an example. And um, in, the web, in the website, we have the link here. You can find um, other examples and instructions to, to personalize this, this visual to the interests of the child. So we can use um, characters, Pokemon, uh, characters of Disney movies, uh, so to engage the child's motivation. Um, so, a bit of a summary. Um, so, the important tips uh, when implementing sensory circuit is to remember to include alerting, organizing, and calming activity, uh, schedule a specific block of time into the day to complete the sensory circuit, preferably in the mornings, but if you can't do this in the afternoons, it's good as well. Uh, have all the equipment ready for all three parts before you begin to help save time. Um, Ideally, five minutes for each stage of the sensory circuit, and you can uh, include a couple of activities from each stage. So 15 minutes on total. Uh, this is uh, to help to maximize the, the benefits of, of sensory circuit, but the, it's flexible if you don't have this amount of time. Even if you do less time, 10 minutes is still going to be beneficial for the child. Uh, and again, include activities that will help to restore their sensory balance and not overload them. So you want them to leave the sensory circuit and go to the classroom more regulated, more calm, more alert, um, not more alert necessarily, but in the right level of alertness and able to uh, feel uh, ready to, to, to engage in learning. So really observe how they respond to each activity and to each sensory circuit um, closely. So yeah, some individuals, they might need to spend more time the alerting activity and do more running or more jumping. And um, others might need more time in the calming section and have more time in the getting a massage or doing deep breathing. Um, so Jen Orwood is basically the person that invented the sensory circuit and this she wrote this book 
called Sensory Circuits. And this is a really good book because it gives a really good theory uh, about sensory circuits and she gives lots of uh, suggestions for each section of the sensory circuit and how to grade each activity to increase the challenge, to increase the challenge as well. Uh, if you, uh, which is good if you're working motor skills as well. Um, you can find online lots of different uh, visuals and resources to implement sensory circuits. Twinkle is a really good platform to get lots of uh, resources as well for exercises, uh, PE activities, yoga cards, calming activities. Um, and we have created a resource sheet which lists equipment that can be used in sensory circuits and explains how to run sensory circuits. So we have that available and please contact us if you would like to, to have us, us to send this to you. All right, so if you have any questions, please contact the allocated CENOT for your school via the CENCO. And for more general OT service queries, please contact our OT lead. Her name is Ellie Lolly, and uh, we have her email here. And we also have the uh, very good range of local offer uh, available online as well. So that's it. Thank you for watching this training and good luck with your sensory circuits. Bye.